Howdy and welcome back to the workshop. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about one of the coolest and most efficient machines in my shop, my 25 ton coal ironworks hydraulic forging press. Now, as you guys know, I'm a bit of a tool nut. I love my antique tools, power hammers, drill presses, band saws, lathes, all of that, anvils, vices. I think that they are great. However, the reason why I say that this is one of the coolest and most efficient tools in my shop is because it is. All right, before we get too far into it, I just wanted to give you guys a disclaimer on the nature of my relationship with Coal Ironworks. Now, I'm really, really close friends with a couple of the guys that work at Coal Ironworks, and they did send me this press. So I am probably a little bit biased. That being said, I feel very strongly. I'm not gonna lie to you guys about anything. The only thing about this press that bugs me is that the foot pedal controller sometimes goes under it while I'm forging. Uh, which is a very small, quick and easy fix that I just haven't taken the time to do yet. So I'm giving you guys my honest feedback about this press, the way that I feel about it, the things that I like about it, but I wanted you guys to know exactly what the nature of my relationship with Coal Ironworks was. So with that, let's keep on talking about the press. Here's the deal. Uh, this is a 25 ton press. That means that it has 50,000 pounds of pressure and that means that it can move a lot of steel. I could throw a piece of three and a half inch round stock under here and it would squish it down. It might not do it as fast as a thousand pound steam hammer, but it takes up a three foot by three and a half foot footprint. That is not very much. It also is very quiet, which means that it can be run in a residential space in your garage. So the shop cost, both of the, the space that it takes up as well as the power compared to how much it can do is very, very high compared to say uh, a 400 pound boatery that initially might cost a little bit less than, than the 25 ton press. I'll just say it. I, I initially bought this hammer for $6,000 two years ago, and I think that my total cost now with the foundation and the tower and everything that I put into it is probably a little bit closer to about $30,000. And this can move the same size chunks of steel that that can. Now that hammer is cool, there's no doubt about it. It, is, it has cool factor level 10, but it breaks down all the time and it's very temperamental. So as cool as that power hammer is, if you really need to get something done, having a reliable tool is very, very important. I just had a hammer in where four bladesmiths came to visit, Salem Straub, Charlie Ellis, Josh Prince, and Mareko Malmasi. And uh, while the hammer was kind of running the whole time, we moved almost all of the steel for that whole hammer in on the Coal Ironworks press. Now part of that was that we need to be able to forge Damascus elements into different shapes, and Charlie Ellis is quite the die maker, and so he was able to whip up different quick change dies to go in the press that were able to stay square and be very precise, and that is a amazing capability to have. So being able to keep things nice and square and controlled is really important in forging precision elements for Damascus and just for forging in general, whether it's hammers or tools or billets of Damascus. Being able to keep things square and at the dimension that you want them to be is a really, really nice asset to have in your shop. Uh, so I'm gonna run over the kind of features of this press with you guys real quick. And we'll start uh, with the interface of steel to press, and that is the die. I just showed you some dies that we had made up. Uh, these are some dies that I had specced out by Coal Ironworks. Uh, when I was over there, I was forging around with some of their stuff and I thought, man, it'd be really neat to have uh, the full width dies, but then to also have that rounding die capability. And so uh, I kind of drew up and kind of let them know what I was thinking for, for a set of dies for this thing. So what we came up with was the footprint of the dies is four, four inches by eight inches. And so I said I wanted five inches of flat die and three inches of round die. Uh, and that is a really nice size because what it gives you is that full width flat die allows you to keep bars really straight as you forge them out. And that combo die really helps you to draw stuff out in a very linear motion. So you can either draw bars out this way or if you wanna spread something out, you can't do that super wide here just because uh, there's only three inches of it, but if you wanna spread out an ax blade uh, or the heel of a shaft knife or something like that, that's very possible here. This press is at the top of its stroke right now. And with these dies in it, you've got about seven and a half inches of daylight. That is really nice because it means that if you're punching a hammer eye or something like that, you've got lots of room there if you wanna feather cut a Damascus billet. And if you really wanted to, you could kinda of mess around and get another two and a half inches of space in there, which is quite cool. 
So the die system is very easy to change out. You have the die plate here, and then you have a tenon on top, with a spot for a set screw. And so all you gotta do is back off that set screw a couple turns, and it pops right on out. So it is a nice and secure way to hold dies in there. For press dies, you kind of have two different camps. You have the speedy die setup, which is normally where you kind of slide in plates. That means that there has to be kind of loose tolerances for quick changing. Uh, and then you have very secure ways, and probably the most secure would be to have like four or more bolts holding that die up there, and that is not very fast to change. So I think this is a really excellent middle of the road between it doesn't move around on you, it has maybe an eighth inch of play back and forth side to side, uh, and you really only see that if you're forging on something really funkily, but then it doesn't take very long to switch out. So those, those quick change dies are often rattly and imprecise, and the bolt-in style are normally very strong, but they take forever to switch out. So I think this is an excellent, excellent option for a die plate setup. Next we'll talk about the way that we interface with the machine. Now, I have the digital press controller on here. That was designed by my friend Logan Gillahan. Now, there have been other folks that have done this in the past, but I don't think that anyone has done it to this caliber. And I know for a fact that Logan came up with this idea independently, but I think that he's done the best version of it by far. Now, there's three different ways that you can move the ram of this press up and down. You've got the jog switches, and those uh, are as long as the press is on, those jog switches will be able to move it up and down. So if your system has some crazy power surge and the system gets fried, those switches will still be able to move uh, the head of the press up and down if there's an emergency or something like that. I personally don't love to use them while forging because while the system is working, this toggle switch makes that ram go up and down. It has a little magnet on it so you can swap it around to where you like it. I like to keep it right there. It's nice and convenient when I'm forging with it. And so this switch doesn't really interact that much with the digital press controller or the DPC. Uh, the DPC mainly interacts with the foot pedal. Now the DPC has a couple of different modes. There's manual mode, and in that mode, the only thing that works is the toggle switch because uh, it stays down, stays up, wherever you leave it with the toggle switch. There's spring return mode. That's the mode that I use probably the most. Uh, it allows you to set the top and bottom parameters of where you want the ram to go. And so if you're forging a one inch bar and you wanna bring it down to three quarters of an inch, you set your bottom set point at three quarters of an inch. And if you wanna be efficient with it, you can set your top set point at 1.1 inches. And so it doesn't come that far up above where the actual work piece is. You can set it up higher if you wanna have room to turn and whatnot. But as long as you're pushing down on the pedal, that ram is traveling down until it hits that set point. And when you let off, it comes up to that top set point. Now, I know what you're thinking, and that's, Will, what if I wanna forge some rectangular bar and I want it to be three quarters of an inch by 1.5 inches. Well, that's very easy to switch around because you have two different parameters that are very easy to switch. So you can set it to three quarters of an inch bottom set point on one side and 1.5 inches on the other side and you can go back and forth very simply by hitting that switch button. There's also a punch mode that I haven't played around with that much because I don't have a punching setup for this press because I don't really punch things very often. But the other mode that I use a lot and, I, and the mode that I think is most unique to this press that is uh, kind of a game changer is the auto mode. And the auto mode is means that as long as you're holding that foot pedal down, it is going to cycle between the top and bottom set points. So if you're doing a final dimensioning on a bar or rounding something out or whatever it is, you can set very tight parameters and have that ram cycle very quickly, which allows you to have a wonderfully clean surface finish. It may not sound like it's that big of a deal, but it really, trust me, makes a really big difference for that final little bit of cleanup work. I've used it cutting in fullers with some of the 5 8 inch wide fullering dies that I have. It's really nice for doing the final dimensioning on billets of Damascus. It's great for getting stuff rounded out. If you want round bar, you can make round bar using flat dies with this thing, and that is insane. Now it's nice that it has all of those features, but those features don't really mean a whole lot if the interface of how you interact with them isn't a clean and smooth operation. But the way that you interact with the touch screen on the controller is very, very straightforward. It doesn't take very much thought. Swapping out dies, it's easy to re-zero them out where you want them. It's easy to say, uh, I've had times where I thought a billet was at one dimension and it turned out to be at another dimension, or I wasn't able to rotate from square side to square side 
uh, like I wanted to be able to. And so I can very quickly set my top parameter to be able to have that room by hitting the set from currents. So say you want to forge something that's the same uh, width as this nut right here. Set the bottom set point, come up, set your top set point. So not only does it allow for very precise control, so you want to be at exactly one inch, you can set it to exactly one inch, but if you have a bar that you've already forged or if you have something else that you want to hit that dimension, it allows you to very quickly use the press essentially as your micrometer and get set to forge down to that same dimension, which is just a wonderful feature. Now that's all well and good to have a great product, to have lots of power, to have a good die system, to have an awesome digital press controller, but the company of Coal Ironworks itself is full of fantastic people as well. They are very passionate about American-made manufacturing, and they don't just make the 25-ton press. This is definitely the professional level model that they offer, and it takes a lot of power, and it takes a decent-sized footprint for a hydraulic press. They also have a 12-ton bench top press that comes in at a very reasonable price. They have a 16-ton, a fast 16-ton, the 25-ton. They have double-headed models. They have loads of different dies for all of the different models, squaring dies, ladder dies, fullering dies, all sorts of stuff. So everything is made here in the United States and they have excellent customer service to back it up. So in the past couple years that I've gotten to know the guys that work at Coal Ironworks, I've just been more and more impressed with the company as a whole, with their products, with their whole attitude about American manufacturing and having products available at reasonable prices for everybody. So I very highly recommend going and checking out Coal Ironworks. They offer a great product, they're very innovative, they're always bringing new products online and it's an awesome company to be able to support. So if you guys are going to Blade Show, they'll have a booth there. You'll be able to check out their products in person. You'll be able to meet the team. They've got a great YouTube channel, got great social media, and they're an excellent company. So thank you guys for following along. I hope you guys uh, realize a little bit better how cool of a tool this is. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.